Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Oh, that's delicious. Today is, say it with me, Friday. Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh, December 16th. Only a couple weeks left of 2022. <clears throat> and I don't know why I got like choked up at the end of that. Uh, it was not an actual emotion. It was just um, <clears throat> creaky things in my throat from the coffee, no doubt. Ah. So, uh, yeah, a week from today, I'll be in Tucson visiting family. So um, doing doing the Christmas thing, right? <laughs> I'm still on the topic of my books. I was looking for one yesterday that I cannot find. And now I'm, it's bothering me. I'm trying to figure out where it went. In fact, it was annoying me enough. I was thinking about buying another copy, except that I'm sure it's here somewhere. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. This is, none of you have offered advice on my um, champagne problem of having people dust my books and move them. Alas. So anyway, um, here we are. I uh, did not get shit done on the book yesterday. Jack shit. Um, went to Writer Coffee. Had uh, some great conversations though. And uh, ended up dallying along. Got back. And uh, went straight into a very long CIPWA meeting. Um, Planning Nebula conference had to be done. And, and I was kind of, I don't know, I was feeling a little under the weather maybe, because then I took a nap, which I don't often do. But I'm feeling perky today. I'm going to race ahead with this book. <laughs> Just watch. Just wait and see. I do have most of the world building sorted out. I'm still waffling on adding one thing, and it's kind of like, yeah, who am I kidding? I think I'm going to add it. Uh, but... I'm still considering it. Um, we had a very interesting conversation yesterday. Oh, let me hold on. Uh, an interesting conversation that was related to uh, things that I've been talking about on here this week. Uh, it's always interesting when conversations from different places to come together. And many of you know, if you're a longtime listener, that I talk to... Um, Fab writer Kelly Robson daily. We chat. She always sends me a good morning when she wakes up, which is since she's in Toronto, considerably ahead of my wake up. Um, but she's writing a novel. This is her first time writing a novel. And so she's been sending me comments on the difference between writing a novel and writing short. She's always written uh, short stories or at most a uh, novella. And so she's been commenting on the difference in writing a novel. And and I remember very, very clearly, and I've talked about it a lot on here, um, when I switched from writing short to writing long to writing novels. And one of the big differences is that, and it's, I don't know, is this a tautology? With a novel, you have a lot more room. So, I mean, that seems maybe overly simplistic because of course a novel is longer you have room for more stuff but it does change the choices that you make it changes how you tell the story um novels are much more forgiving in some ways and i know that there are some writers who will argue against this um the i'm sorry i should give this an order right organize my thoughts so a lot of times novelists will say that you don't have to obsess over every word and every sentence and every paragraph like you do when writing short because when you're writing short every bit of real estate is precious and so you have to be just super scrupulous about what you choose to include um, and whereas novels you don't have to be that scrupulous. You have more wiggle room. Now, 
so this is coming back but saying it in order there are some writers who will get very happy about this and go no this is not true that's the voice they use that's not true uh when you write a novel you must ha pay attention to every word and every line and every paragraph just as scrupulously i'm like okay uh <laughs> i mean yeah you don't get sloppy about it but it um it's just not the same and a huge thing about writing novels and this is kind of what we were talking about yesterday because i was saying to uh jack and jim that somebody commented i think i already mentioned on the podcast but i i really appreciated the comment that uh one reason she loves my fantasy books and loves my world building was i think she commented on the youtube channel here was that there are sometimes details world building details or little things that don't apply to anything she says they're just kind of like weird and random things just like life has weird and random things in it and it really made me happy that she said this because yeah i really do believe in having stuff in my novels that are just weird and random things that are just like there because part of life is there you know it's uh it's just not everything is meaningful so i was trying to explain this and um, and jack was confused he was like what 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 do you mean and Jim said, well, it's the opposite of Chekhov's smoking gun, uh, where, you know, Chekhov says, if I show you, um, let me get this exactly right. Okay. I, I, I conflated two things. There's smoking gun and there's Chekhov's gun. So erase the smoking part from your brain, but I found this. Um, so it says Chekhov's gun simply refers to any seemingly unimportant element that becomes significant later on in the story remove everything that has no relevance to the story Chekhov wrote if you say in the first chapter that there is a rifle hanging on the wall in the second or third chapter it absolutely must go off so it's interesting to me anyway um, and after all we're doing this because I want to sit here and talk over coffee <laughs> is that this is the second time that Chekhov has come up recently, right? Because I was talking about the whole um, show, don't tell principle and how that arose from Chekhov. And just to revisit that briefly, you know, where Chekhov said, you know, don't tell me the moon was shining. Show me moonlight glinting off of broken glass. So it's really important to remember that Chekhov was writing short. Um, and this idea of we won't revisit the whole show don't tell thing uh, it's in one of the previous podcasts i'm sure you can find it um <laughs> not going to be helpful that way i guess i would say i'd link to it but then i'd have to look for it yeah so yeah i just double checked and um check off road only plays short stories <laughs> and yeah i was sorry i yeah and he was a physician short stories and and plays um i i love the things that uh pop up you know on google when you ask questions like there's the other uh questions people ask what's so special about Chekhov? <laughs> um it says he captured life in the Russia of his time by using a deceptively simple technique devoid of obtrusive literary devices. So no wonder he said me take out everything phase. So there's a few things to keep in mind here. My point, and I do have one, is that first of all, writers can give all the advice they want to about how they do what they do. Um, and writers are asked to give that advice. And here I sit dispensing advice. And to some extent, we can try to encapsulate our techniques. We can try to encapsulate the, the rules that we follow, but there's only so much that we can do to transmit um, what is maybe largely an intuitive process. 
so so anyway the rules for writing short and writing long are different uh, yes I could see how especially in very short fiction or even in a play that you do need to um, take out everything that is not completely relevant to the story because because real estate is so expensive but in novels part of the reason that people read novels is to luxuriate in the world right is to uh, have that escape where you get to go be part of the world and enjoy things which is actually helping me think about the novel that I'm writing right now uh, because I am trying to write it much more snappily and I it's occurring to me that I could give myself a little bit more room to uh, enjoy the world not it creates a certain velocity to have every detail in the world or every detail mentioned in the plot be pointing towards something and certainly you could go back through and take out stuff but if you are trying to create a a textured world and I think that was a, that was the word that um, Jim may have used yesterday by including things that you know like having a rifle on the wall that never does go off that can add texture to your story um, you know it could be that the gun stopped working ages ago uh, it could be that it's a, a plaster simulacrum uh, you know it's we have all kinds of things around us that have no relevance to our life um I'm kind of looking at the things on my desk uh and, and we were using this example because Jim brought us all little pots of jam and a brownie very sweet and he brought it in a TJ Maxx uh bag and so we're sitting around this table um at counter culture in Santa Fe if you all want to know and the TJ Maxx bag was sitting at the end and Emily had left early and I had pointed to the bag and I said is that Emily's is you know is that an important bag and Jim said no 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 that was what I brought the jam in I said okay so as we're talking about this stuff with the details uh I was saying you know that the the TJ empty TJ Maxx bag adds a certain amount of texture to our environment uh from this we know that Jim and or his wife shop at TJ Maxx and but that doesn't mean that this needs to be a significant detail later in the tale of Jim we don't it doesn't matter whether or not they uh, shop at TJ Maxx except that it does tell us something about who they are right and and Jim was running with it and he said you know of course later if we have a scene with Jim and his wife Ming Lee at Marshall's we might wonder it's like why are they at Marshall's when they're clearly TJ Maxx shoppers um yeah it, it's interesting to think about um the and the other aspect and I know I've mentioned this before is you know this idea that every single scene everything in the story needs to be driving towards the point of the story I hear writers talk about this a lot especially newer writers where they're like oh I went back through and looked to see if every scene was contributing towards the point of the story and it's like well you know it, not everything has to drive relentlessly to the point I think it can create a sense of what's the word I want lifelessness maybe um because if we're trying to and yesterday I talked about biosphere 2 so I won't reiterate it but if we are trying to create our own biosphere 2 by world building in our stories then what we're trying to talk about is sorry I'm thinking and talking at the same time which doesn't always work 
what we're trying to do is create a living textured world, right? And in our lives, not everything is driving towards the point. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of pointless things that happen in our days. Uh, and, and that's relevant in a way. You know, you could bring it back around and, and have these relevant details later. But one thing that happens is, is if you have every single detail mentioned has a payoff later, then readers are look for that, right? And they're like, oh, well, that rifle's going to go off by the third act. Um, it's... And I'm not being articulate about this, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm going back to the stuff on my desk. So I'm <laughs> looking at the things that are underneath my monitor. And I've got three things of lip balm, <laughs> a couple of rubber bands, a dongle, um, two, a stack of four quarters, some empty CD cases, a hair clip, a pen, um, and some sticky notes. And so what this does is this tells you a little bit about me and what my daily uh, writing life is like, which is that my lips get chapped because I live in the desert and the rubber bands are from a package that was delivered that was rubber banded together and I haven't put it with the other rubber bands. And the quarters are because David handed me the four quarters to pay me a dollar for something. The empty CD cases because I put together um, the travel case for the car and put CDs in there uh, and the dongle because I finally got my unifying receiver to work so both my mouse and my keyboard uh, now go to one unifying receiver and so now I don't need two but I haven't ever done anything with it my hair clip because I get hot as I'm walking and my pen and sticky notes because I need those things, right? But they don't all contribute to some point, right? I mean, there's texture. It tells you that I kind of accumulate things that I don't actually deal with. And maybe I will now that I've been looking at them and noticing them. But there, there's a difference between a detail driving towards some kind of payoff and a detail that creates texture. So probably took me way too long to say that. But I do think it's interesting. Um, on another note, I actually did um, make, a no I'm, on another point, I made myself a note to say this, was I know that I was angsting yesterday about um, that this will probably be my lowest word count year either, ever. And I was realizing, and I may have to go back and look at my podcasts at the end of last year or the beginning of this year, that I did consciously try to reel it back um, that I felt like I was I'd been pushing pretty hard for a long time and that maybe I needed to not push so hard uh, I was remembering that last year this time I was reading that book on breaking the stress cycle and uh, gave that book to a number of friends and yeah, I was feeling much more stressed out this time last year than I am this year. So I think that that does speak to something. So I am trying to, to be good with this. Um, yeah, and not, not try to push so hard all the time, which I do know is one of my things uh, that Jennifer would say that it is my uh, achiever Clifton strength. So there we are all right um yeah friday i hope you all have a productive and or relaxing weekend as you choose um hope that the holidays are treating you all right and i will talk to you all on monday you all take care bye bye